We've got Ruby back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing all right, Jared. Doing pretty well. How are you doing today? You know, another Ohio State victory. Ohio State moves to 6 0. You know, just a, another day avoiding chaos and another day in is, the office. Because chaos is for Tuesdays. And as long as we keep it that way, everything will be fine. Yeah, um, we won't, won't talk too much about uh, chaos. We'll cover that in our Tuesday's episode for collegiate chaos, but not not as much chaos as it was uh, for week five. But it was it was OK. It was OK. P possibly some some big chaos uh, during Ohio State's uh, bye week this upcoming week here. But we'll we'll cover that in another episode. But now we're, we're going to cover the Ohio State Michigan State game. So this is the Scarlet and Grade episode where we, you know, regrade Ohio State's performance over the weekend here. Uh, just a little bit about what we do in this episode. We'll we'll grade each of the positions, the coaching. And hand out some Buckeye leaves at the end of the episode here, and then answer uh, some of your questions as well. I couldn't have said it better myself, Kyle. All right, let's jump right into it. Ohio State 49, Michigan State 20. Uh, it, it, it is a cover. So for those that picked the <laughs> over for Ohio State, congratulations. Not, not, the, not, not the over, but okay. The, yes. <laughs> you, you, know, you, know, you know what I mean. All right. Uh, so. I, 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 but need, Kyle, if, if if we are going to talk over under for a second, let's just acknowledge and thank you nice. for the assist on this gangland. Uh, that this was just a very nice game. It was a nice game. Yes, very nice. Yes. Okay. Sorry. It was Go very ahead. nice. <laughs> um, yeah, it's forty nine to twenty. I think that's right around what Ohio State is averaging. Her game is 49 points, I believe it is. Um, it's still, they still retain the number one scoring offense in the country still. And yeah, it. I feel like for how many yardage Ohio State had in this game, I felt like it could have been much more, <laughs> definitely much more uh, points on the scoreboard there. But I mean, 49-20 game against um, Michigan State, you know, you'll take that every, you'll take that every year. Yeah, um, it it could have looked, as Kyle points out, it could look better at times. I mean, you you <laughs> almost literally handed them a touchdown. Uh, just at you know to start, not not start the game, but it was a high state's what second drive, right? Um, you hand them another touchdown in the second quarter by just. And, and like, were they touchy penalties? Some of them, but you basically hand them another touchdown just by I, how many? I legitimately had to have been like half of the yards on that drive were penalty yards. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, at least gangland. Yes, at least. Um, uh, so you you get you basically hand them another touchdown, and then at the end of the game they get they get a they get a. So they get a touchdown against the uh, backups, but yeah, I'm mean, overall the defense I thought looks good. I think Ohio State's still struggling a bit at corner. We'll we'll grade out the positions later, um, but I thought the linebackers had a good game. Um, Eichenberg had a great game. Um, passing yards for Michigan State still under 200. They won some 50-50 balls, and Ohio State's got to figure that out. You can't keep doing that. Yeah. Um, but you know, they, go, they put good pressure on the quarterback. Um, well, how many, uh, four sacks, four sacks for minus, uh, 31 yards, uh, on the sacks. Um, yeah. And you know, I'm, I don't know why, I don't know why I'm trying to avoid saying this, but seven total rush yards, which was in the negatives Going when the, the starters quarter. went out. Yes. Yeah. That, that, that I was think it was we minus 11 about. at the end of the third. Yeah. That was, that was something that we were talking about in, in our discord channel. Yes. Uh, that's counting sacks. Yeah. It, it does count sacks, but still, even, even if you took out the sacks, 
the running backs were averaging uh, less than a yard a carry still, which is just ridiculous. I I was hoping that Ohio State would have one of these games here. I mean, you, you see other teams like, uh, what was it? Was it like Michigan did a couple of weeks ago to, I forget which terrible team they played, uh, but they, they held them to like really low rushing yards too. And I was really hoping to see uh, Ohio State uh, do that in one of their games. And it so happened to be against a Big Ten opponent here. Yes, uh, Gangland, one of those terrible teams. <laughs> one um, of those. It's, it's so hard to keep track with Michigan with the insane schedule they're playing this year. Yeah, uh, holds Michigan State to a... Ah, crap, I just had it. Where'd it go? Uh, Yards per rush of 0.4. 0.4. Again, the sacks, of course, skew that, but still. (laughs) But still. Good thing Sparty signed Tucker to a 10-year contract. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Live by the sword, die by the sword. Um. Mm-hmm. Going to the transfer portal was great for them last year. Uh, didn't quite work out. Isn't quite working out so far this year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Man, look, look look at that total yardage, Jared. 614 to 202. It, it's not it's not every game you get to see uh, a team triple output of their opponent in total yardage. Just crazy i don't think i've ever seen that at ohio state um in a, sure in a long have. in a long time in a long time i'm willing to bet you have um uh, but i just it's also yeah, six, not six it's also kyle i think it's also very important to notice it's not often you see a team get the total yardage that matches the zip code they were playing or damn it the area code uh, they were playing in ruined uh, the joke i ruined the joke ruined the joke Jared. <laughs> uh 614 yards, 377 in the air, 237 uh, on the ground. Yes, no mad, bad, Jared. Uh, so let's 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 just jump right into it here, Jared. Uh, so what we're going to rank the the we're going to give out the gradings for each position here, and we we always start with the coaching staff. Overall coaching staff, Jared, grading A to an F here. I'll start off and just say overall, I thought the coaching staff was an A. Uh, I thought they they had a great game plan here, uh, executed very well overall. It, definitely some improvements, but I think overall the coaching staff uh, got it got an A. Yeah, no, I totally agree. Um, I, I didn't I didn't necessarily see anything like extraordinary that would make me want to push them to an A plus. Um, I tell you what, actually, go ahead and. Go ahead and drop that down to an A minus for me. All right. Because they keep kicking the fucking kickoff out of bounds. <laughs> those, in, those in the chat, what do you, what would you grade the coaching as a whole here? The coaching as a whole. Yeah, the kicking out of bounds. I don't know what it is with Ohio State. And I thought that was a Urban Meyer thing yeah. before. And now it's like, okay, all right. It's not Urban Meyer now. Uh, <laughs> but. But yeah, that's really odd, and I hope that they just learn learn from it and just just kick it out of bounds. Let them start from the twenty five. Stop trying to pin it because you know they they can fair catch it anyway. So why risk that? Yeah, just just kick the damn ball. Yep. All right. Uh, offensive coaching. So overall coaching, the offensive the offensive side. I you know it, Matt Gangland. An, yeah. Um. I'd, out I'd of, them, out of bounds, but the back bound. He wants to kick yes. it out of the back bound. Yes. Uh, I would give I would give the offensive the offensive coaching staff an A. Uh I mean, there was that interception uh in the first quarter there. I'll cover that here in a little bit. But other than that, I mean, six over six hundred rushing yards against a, a big ten opponent. Total yards. 600 over 600 yards total offensive yardage here a a um yeah it's 
yeah, I I have uh, I have no real issues aside from like the pick six, which I think you have to, you know, call a coaching issue, making sure all your players are on the same page and all of that. Right. So I guess you call that a coaching issue. You know, we won't give them. I think I'll probably drop them to down to an A minus for that. Um you, you know, you I mean you in a in a game that matters, you can't just be handing out points. Uh, bad wide receiver, re- yeah, no, 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 absolutely no, mad. But well, you need to into- make sure that the guys know what they're doing. Um, yep. So yeah, I mean that that interception's on the wide receiver. Yeah, but it's October now. You don't get to be young that long in college football. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, All right. Uh- so we'll just jump right into that. The quarterback quarterback rating here, Jared, CJ, CJ Stroud went for the, went during the game here as my mouse is being wacky here. Uh, 21 for 26, 361 yards, six touchdowns. And that interception that did go for a pick six, but, but nomad, your, your guy, your guy though, went, went and threw it for a hundred percent completion though. So do do we have a quarterback uh controversy here? <laughs> That's Stewart's guy. Uh well it's Nomad's guy too. Yeah, well yeah, Stewart's <laughs> not here to pick on, so you get it, Nomad. Um <laughs> yes. Yeah, I thought Stroud had a great you make game. fun of me, I'll, I'm gonna make fun of you. So <laughs> uh, isn't that just what we do here? I thought Stroud it had is. a great game. Um five incompletions, <laughs> six interceptions. When you have more touchdowns than incompletions. Touchdowns. Did I say interceptions? You did, Jared. I know what you mean. All right. Why? Yeah, yeah Kyle. I, I agree. But- Kyle, what the hell is wrong with us right now? I don't know. I don't know. I, th- I think it's the chat. I just need to just put the chat off to the side okay. here. So, yeah, five six touchdowns, six- only five incompletions. Uh, so any day, I'm sober, Gangland. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I'm not even drinking a beer right now. Uh, yeah, anytime you get more touchdowns and incompletions. Uh, that's a good that's a good day. The pick six, as Kyle and I talked about, I think is more of a uh, pre-read issue on the wide receiver. So I'm not going to necessarily hold that against Stroud too much. I give him an A plus here. I, I give him an A just because of that interception, whether it's his his fault or the wide receiver. It's it's a it's between those two. So Stroud has to take some some blame into that as well. So instead of the A plus, I, I just give him an A there. I mean. I mean, some, every other throw that he made there, just superb, just just absolutely beautiful throwing by CJ Stroud. And some of them, you know, you, you got the talent, you got the talent receivers out there. Let let them let them make plays. And he sure did that with uh, with Marvin Harrison Jr. here, which um, which will go right into that Jared, the wide receivers. Then, yeah, I, um, I, I, go ahead. Uh, I'd, I'd give the wide receivers an A plus here. I I do not remember and um, I do not remember a a drop from the from the receivers at all. Other than the one, other than the one, <clears throat> the one mishap with a just Stroud and Abuka not on the same page there. Well, Abuka turned that around right away, like two or three plays later. Yeah. Sparty had a mishap and he and Nubuka took that to the house. Yeah, yeah I, I guess you're right. Yeah, um, it did lead directly to points. Yeah, I, which I, is I, why I'm going to do an A minus yeah. personally. Um, okay. If you know, if the, if we're just grading Marvin Harrison here, I think maybe <laughs> you, you do an A plus. But yeah, you, yeah. you gave away you gave away seven points to the to the other team and you you can't do that you know you got to get your you got to get your reads down correctly yeah that's fair all right uh offensive line here a plus it it, go, it goes along with the protection that they've they've been giving cj stroud and them leading the way to rushing 237 yards against michigan state here o-line got it just an a plus yeah i uh, no disagreement. All right. And we'll go right into the running backs. 
again, 237 yards. Uh, let me let me get the breakdown here. Henderson, 19 carries for 118 yards, Jared. Which is that good? That, Jared is a 6.2 yard per average carry. 6.2 yards per carry average. There you go. Yeah, I got. I, I was getting there. I was getting there. <laughs> uh, and and he was, I I think at the end of the half, if I'm remembering correctly, had almost a ten yard average. Um, he had like a nine point seven or something like that at one point. Like, and all of that without a huge breakout run. He had a twenty six yarder, which is obviously great. But, you know, sometimes when you see someone like running the ball 10 per carry, it's because there's a 40, 50, 60 yarder in there. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, So, yeah, with uh, with Henderson, uh, I thought he played great. Hayden comes in in junk time for the most part, just junk time, you know, does what he does. And in he's running in a harder situation because he doesn't have his offensive line and um they know like the other team knows that you're going to run the ball. So a little bit harder of a situation for Hayden to come in, but I thought when he did come in, especially during the uh, competitive parts of the games, I thought he looked good. Um, And as, as did Xavier Johnson. Seems like Stroud under pressure more than usual. I don't, I don't know if that's true. Um, yeah, but the pressure is the O line. Whenever that results in sacks, mostly is on the quarterback. Um, I, I don't, I don't, I think the offense is the offensive line's done an excellent job pass blocking for the most part. Like you know, other teams have gotten pressure, um, but also just attribute that to MSU having a pulse. Yeah, um, but. I think Wisconsin has a better defensive line. I know Notre Dame has a better defensive line. Like this isn't the, this isn't the toughest offensive line they've played this year. Or excuse me, defensive line they've played this year. Mm-hmm. Second yeah. later in the game too, when it was already put away. Um, for the most part, yeah. Um, it was a it was a situation where Stroud is normally able to sort of roll out of that, but in this particular case just didn't quite have the last step to do that. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm not. But again, like, I don't feel like he's been under pressure more than. Like he was last year, as an example, I think he's a lot yeah. cleaner this year than he was last year so far. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's go to the next position here. The tight end. The tight end here. Yeah, um, we get we get our first touchdown uh, for for G Scott. G? My for G brain, Scott. my brain is not firing tonight, Kyle. I don't know what's wrong. It's okay, it's okay. I'm here. I'm here for you. Here. <laughs> uh, yeah, G Scott. G Scott got his first touchdown. Uh, always, always great to see his um, hard work pay off here. Uh, yeah. Uh, I I would say overall I thought I thought again expect ex, expectations from what we are thinking of the tight ends here uh, I, I feel that these past couple of games the tight ends haven't been as as um involved in the pass involved yeah thank you involving in the pass here was it here uh, G Scott had one catch for two yards for a touchdown. Um, was there another? I, that was it. That was the only tight end here. I'm looking at the stats. So yeah, I, I think Stover I, had maybe a target or two, but didn't didn't complete any. Um, yeah, I mean, it's but, it but goes the, back to it goes back to what we were saying at the preseason. When you have three amazing wide receivers on the field, and this is. By the way, just to remind everyone, without the best wide receiver, without JSN, um, it's even with your quote unquote other three guys, they're all insanely good and you're trying to get everyone the ball. How do you 
there's going to be games in which someone disappears and it's just because someone else is killing it. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, yeah, I, I, I would give the tight ends an A minus here. Uh, they did very, very well with the run blocking here. And again, expectations from what we saw earlier in the year that just seemed kind of just to dive off now. So I'm, I'm hoping to see the tight ends get a little bit more involved in the passing game in the future here. But that's that's just me being nitpicky, though. Yeah. Um, Ganglin says Stover made catches when he needs to. Yeah. Um, I, I think as, as CJ Stroud has gotten more comfortable with his other wide receivers, he's been going back to the other wide receivers a little bit more than he has Stover recently. Um, but we also have to remember the tight ends contribute in the running game as blockers. That's always an important thing to note. But yeah, I think a, I think a, a minus is fair. OK. All right. Awesome. All right. Now we move to the defensive side. Defensive coaching. What would you give the defensive coaches in this game? What rating? Um, I thought they I thought they played well. I mean, I. Uh, we do have to, I think, hold the coaches accountable for some excessive penalties, I, I think, is something we can, you know, put on the feet of the coaches. Um, I think you you do have a situation in which the defense itself only gave up the, the starting defense, only gave up a touchdown the entire game, holds their rushing to almost negative yards, holds their passing game to under 200 yards like we have to you know celebrate what the coaches and the players did here absolutely but the you know just like i have a hard time giving the defensive coaching staff an a plus with as many penalties as we saw and with the mm -hmm. you know i think still struggling a bit at corner as well yeah maybe this is me being too harsh i mean i i gave i gave I gave an A minus for the defensive coaching. Again, you you look at the you look at the numbers there, just re ridiculous. We've already mentioned it a number of times already in this in this episode or already, and held Sparty three for eleven on third down. As some more more numbers here, um, average yards per or average gain per play at four point two yards. Very very low. But kind of go along with what Jared said, a lot of just dumb penalties. And there was times, especially in that first half, and there was, and I was one of them too. And I know there's others that was in our Discord chat here that was talking about like, we are playing way too soft, way too, giving the receivers way too much of a cushion. And they're getting those easy five, seven yard um, catches w without any kind of, um, pressure put up right right up in there but you saw in the second half they they did change some things defensively and it, they just sparty just could not move the ball much at all in that second half when the first team was on yeah um you know, Gangland says, I think part of it was looking ahead to the buy. Then he says, uh, five high shell, and we've run a lot of C1 and C0 this year. Yeah, I, I think did, that's yeah. all all of all all of that is going to lead to the um, corners playing back a bit more. Yeah, um, I'll get to that one. No mad here when we get to the corners here, but uh, uh, defensive ends is the next is the next position here. This is the first game in quite a while. We saw the defensive ends. I mean, they've always caused a lot of um, pressure to the quarterback. It was very disruptive, but we saw them actually like getting their hands on the quarterback now and getting actually getting their stats in here. Uh, defensive ends did very, very well in this game. I was really happy to see them in the backfield and actually making tackles instead of them being disruptive and having the linebackers <laughs> make those tackles. Yeah. And, uh, you know, once again, we aren't getting, you know, a whole bunch of stats out of the defensive ends, but man, I, I, I said it at one point uh, in the discord during the game that 
like some like I think Mike Hall owes JT and Jack Sawyer a beer. I don't know how many times I've seen one of the defensive ends, you know, almost get to the quarterback. And essentially force the quarterback to, you know, move his position. And it's always like the second the quarterback starts to scramble or shift in the pocket a little bit. It seems like Mike Hall or one of the defensive ends is always like right there to to clean him up. Mm -hmm. The defensive ends are causing a lot of sacks that they aren't actually getting for themselves. But as long as the quarterback's getting sacked, that's all that matters to me. Exactly, Gingley. JT always seems to be just a step or half a step away. He, he's he's he is so close, and it's it's disappointing that he doesn't, from a stat standpoint, isn't seeing the numbers of how disruptive he really is. Uh, defensive tackles, a plus. I mean, <laughs> Mike Hall. <laughs> Mike Hall is just a beast. But yeah. was, I think he had two. He had two and a half sacks in this game ridiculous yeah and vincent had some great plays as well too um and so did darren cage too yep absolutely yeah yeah I a plus the defend- for the defensive tackles yeah i agree all right and linebackers here jared i i can't think of a time when the when the linebackers were out of place were they um yeah i i can't think of how of anything bad the linebackers did so I, i'd have to give them an a plus here they did they did extremely well made open field tackles um i mean huge part of holding sparty to um to God, i forget the number again here uh to seven rushing yards total here yeah a plus for the linebackers yeah um especially in a game where we didn't see steel play a ton um you know, Eichenberg definitely steps up, does his thing. Uh, we saw Eichenberg do uh, a couple of great things. And, and as Kyle said, um, it never, never at any point did I ever think to myself, oh, where are the linebackers or, oh, what were the linebackers doing? Like they continue to, to do exactly what they should be doing. Um, mm-hmm. I don't think I'm going to give them an A plus because I don't necessarily know if I saw the amount of disruption I think it would take for a you know, for me to actually give the linebackers an A plus, because like the expect we always talk about when we do this, right? We're grading these guys against themselves. We're grading them against expectation. And like the expectation for the linebackers have gone up at this point, right? Like this exact same performance sure. in September, we probably would have given them an A plus. But, you know, as the season goes, the expect the expectations change. Uh, So, yeah, I, I just didn't necessarily see anything extraordinary here. So. Um, but yeah, so an A, I think is absolutely fair. Ike spy right. play on the open uh, and open field tack on the quarterback in the first half was amazing. Knowles development and coaching. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. Yeah. And right. a lot one of, of the, one of the reasons you see that nomad too, is that I feel like in the past he would have been like standing there waiting for the quarterback and Knowles has it in these guys' heads now that you're attacking. So he's not like sitting back waiting, reacting and reacting. Um, but he is instead, you know, attacking and making them choose. Yep. All right. Uh, the cornerbacks here. Uh, I'd give the corners in this game a B plus. Uh, again, I think maybe it's not fair for me to, give them a B here, but I, because maybe, maybe it's the scheme that Noah's had to have that umbrella type of uh, uh, defense out there against Michigan state. But, but there, there were so many, there was um, quite a few penalties, quite a few. It just seemed like they didn't know where the ball was going. And, and the, I think there's a couple of plays that Sparty just pretty much just mossed our our corners here but overall i mean you still hold you still hold a team to under 200 passing yards it's still that's still a good day but i I can't give them an a here so i'd give them a b plus um i i would 
I would say I would say a B. You know, we talk about the one touchdown they gave up during, um, you know, what what I would consider the actual competition of the game. Um, the and, one and touch, yeah. the one touchdown they give up was, you know, I kept saying because of penalties, because of penalties, a lot of those penalties were coming like from the corner. Cam Brown got so tilted during that drive that they benched him. Um, I I don't I don't I don't know if I'm seeing the corners get better. Um, I, that's sort of the unfortunate truth of it. Um, the good news here, though, is I don't did I I don't even remember seeing Denzel Burke play. Oh, he he had three tack he had three. Oh no no yeah, no 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 no. I I know he played, but my point is is like I don't remember him playing. You, do you know what I mean? Like, I and I'm just saying, that, like, that's, that's the good thing. <laughs> yes, when you're a cornerback, if you if you sit back and you think, did Denzel Burke even play? <laughs> like, that's obviously a good thing, right? Yep. He was hardly on camera, which is exactly what he wants. Exactly. I think the young corners have played better uh, when when they get to the run. Uh, yeah, I think so. Um. I think it's a smaller sample size. That is also true. Um, yeah, but yeah, Cam Brown had a couple bad series. Denzel Burke, like 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 I said, we just kind of didn't even notice in this game, which is exactly what you want. So I'm not going to totally trash the corners because um, the young guys who who came in, um, I thought played well. Um, Cam Brown had a couple bad series, and you know that sort of taints it. Um, but I, but I, and again, because our expectations change and we kind of know that the corners and the corner performance is like the weak spot on this defense right now, that again, maybe our expectations should go down a bit too, which is why I feel good, like in a B plus area, mm -hmm. uh, maybe yeah. even an A minus. Okay. All right. And the, uh, safeties here, safeties did just a tremendous job, kind, kind of like the corners. Uh, didn't hear too much of them. Um, McAllister had a good game. Hickman had a good game. Uh, yeah, they, I, overall the the safeties had a had a really good game. A solid day for me. Yeah, I I agree. Um, yeah, I I agree. That's it. Um, I I thought they played, you know, as well as you needed them to play. Um, e with this defense there wasn't necessarily a ton of like big plays which is sort of where the safeties come in a lot um i thought the linebackers and the defensive line were doing a good job so you didn't need the safeties to come up and run support a lot um i thought proctor made a couple good plays i think hickman made a couple good plays ransom got the interception uh yeah so i it was ransom right yeah it was ransom uh gets the interception I, I thought yeah. the safeties played well. Um, I'll give him an A. All right. And special teams, Jared. Yes. Um, stop I'd, kicking. Stop kicking the ball out of bounds. Yeah. I'd, can we A minus, can we, A minus for me? Um, this is a game with no field goals. So what you doing, Ruggles? Jeez. Come on, guy. Um. Not not a lot of punting, uh, so I kind of I'm kind of forced to take my issue with the kickoffs here, um, and make it an even bigger issue because like what else did the special teams do this game? And like I I gotta give them like because there were even instances where they would kick it and the Michigan State guy would catch it, and even then. And even then they would get good returns. I I don't I don't like where the kickoff coverage and kickoffs are at right now. And it was basically all the special teams did all game. I give them like a C. All right. Yeah, Mur Murko averaged 52 yards for per punt here. He punted three times. Uh, none of them, none of them this first time, I think, all year that he hasn't had a punt that went inside the landed inside the 20 yard line. 
Um, and <laughs> I know there's kind of a, uh, a little stat that I think even we mentioned too. I know some other other places mentioned it too. Uh, first yardage on a punt return all year <laughs> for the um, against the Buckeyes, but yeah, got to stop. Got to stop kicking it out of bounds on on kickoffs here. So, I mean, you, everything else special teams did w- was fine. So, yeah, I think A minus is fair. I think C is is too harsh in my opinion, Jared. But what else did the, spe- the special team didn't even do anything other than kick off? All right. And time for our Buckeye leaves, Jared. So we're going to give a Buckeye leaf for offensive side, defensive side, and a, we'll just call it a wild card here. Uh, so the chat here for their offense looks like uh, Nomad says Stroud for the offense and Hall for the defense. I I didn't like I'm sorry to give away the game so quickly, but I agree. <laughs> I agree. Uh yeah, CJ Stroud again in a game where you can have more touchdowns than than incompletions. That's a good day. Uh yeah. six touchdowns is incredible. Um yeah, and then Mike Hall with two and a half sacks. Even if, like I said, he kind of owes JT some some drinks. Uh, yeah, you, the, 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 those are assisted sacks, even if they aren't going down on the stats as assisted sacks. But yeah, my call still. Mm, yeah, I have. I mean, yeah, Stroud is your is the easy one on the offense, but I'll, I'll give it to Marvin Harrison Jr. Just dude has just been lights out this year. I mean, we knew, we knew he was really good, but boy. But boy, he's just lights out. He's just he's it's just unfair right now. He now owns the record for <laughs> three touchdown games by an Ohio State wide receiver. That's crazy. More. He has it, had three or more touchdowns. He's a true sophomore. Yes, he is. I assume they I assume he doesn't. It doesn't matter. Even if he took a red shirt last year, he's not going to use it. We we get this year and next year Marvin Harrison Jr. doesn't matter what the what 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 title he has, um. But yeah, I yeah Marvin Harrison Jr. Uh, three now three games with more than uh, with three or more touchdowns, which is an Ohio State record. No one else has has done that more than twice. Uh, Joey Galloway did it twice and maybe some other guys did it twice too uh but yeah he he now holds the record and he's seven starts into his career almost half of the games <laughs> almost half of the games that is that is just ludicrous it's stupid it's right, it's just uh, straight up I, stupid I, I had a hard time picking anybody else other than my call for the yeah, defense I, yeah and for, and for my for my wild card, dude has just been just silently having a great year. I mean, we keep talking. I mentioned about Marvin Harrison Jr. and how how much he's been, um, how just how stellar he's been this year. But Ibuka has had a tremendous year as well too. So I'm, I'll give my wild card to Ibuka too. Oh, sorry. I thought you were going to keep going. There's something in the in the tenor of your voice that made me think you were going to keep going, but uh, but you didn't. Yeah, um, I'm going to give. I'm uh, I'm going to give my wild card uh, to Henderson. I think he was uh, given the opportunity to be the guy, and he absolutely stepped up and killed it. Um, I, I do still think he's a tad to i think he's looking for the for the wide open break home run run a little a little too he did better he did better in this game maybe it's because he wasn't looking over his shoulder um especially some of the early carries like i thought he was like dancing a little too much instead of just going um but he was i think as the game went on he found his footing Mm -hmm. yep fair enough Fair Ransom enough. did a great job in coverage. Yes, he did. Absolutely, he did. Uh, 42% of the time, he scores three touchdowns every time. It's ridiculous. All right. Uh, that's it is that's 
if, if that if a stat like that could somehow even if it falls to like 25 percent that is like t-shirt worthy by the end of the year yeah all right it's time for some uh questions from our fellow sloop cats in the uh in our discord here all right so we'll, we'll start off here and <laughs> nomad nomad always has uh, yes, Nomad asks too many questions, yes. Uh, <laughs> but that's fine. That is fine, though. Uh, he says here, after beating a trio of of um, middling teams, are we surprised ESC... I can't read that. ESECPN <laughs> runs its headline article on the, quote, greatness of the SEC. Did they really? Like, is that a thing that I didn't... I don't, I don't check the worldwide leader. Yes. Why? I mean, legitimately, like, okay, like, one in, like, you have number one and number two, according to the coaches, Bama fell to three in the AP um, money. Yeah. I would say, you see what just happened? Do you see what just happened there, Nomad? I force you to answer your own question. Wizard. <laughs> I'm a wizard. Yeah. I, I think overall, th things will will pan out i mean we're starting to see the teams that are like oh we'll rank them high and come to find out you know florida's not that good oh texas a and not that good oh arkansas is not that good oh kentucky's not that good it's all going to pan out it's all going to pan out i like don't don't fret it like i think ohio state's the best team in the country right now some of the ap voters agree with me most don't um i legitimately we were talking about this during the social screen. Um, I was saying it all during the off season, all during the off season. I was saying if Ohio state's offensive line can be above average. And if the defense can be top 25, then this team can win a national title. And both, both of those bars have been met and surpassed. Offensive line is playing excellently. Like, is this, I haven't even thought about, I didn't even think about this till just right now, Kyle. And, and, and yeah, the defense is, you know, I, I, considering the competition, I'd call them top 10 in the country. I don't, I don't care what the actual stats say. Um, there are top 10 defense in the country. All, and Kyle, how actually like in the scope of Ohio state, how good is this mm -hmm. offensive line right now? Uh, I think I've said it uh, before the season started, Jared. I, I said that this could be one of the best offensive lines in the country. And they are. I think I think this game with uh, lighting up one sack, they've only let up four sacks all year. So they're giving C.J. Stroud all the time in the world to make his throws, to buy a little time, let those stellar wide receivers get open. And then you're paving the way for the the running backs here, Chop and Hend and uh, Trey Hundo, running free here, getting barrel. It's not happening that often where they're getting hit in the backfield. Yeah, it, it happened a little bit more in this game here, but overall, it's just crazy how how great this offensive line is. And um, Nomad, you're saying we never we never talk about O line being legit. Yeah, I, I, we said we said in every uh, scarlet and grade, and I think almost every time it's been an A plus or an A grading. So, <laughs> yeah, um, there have been like some false start issues, but they're humans. That happens. Um, it hasn't turned into like a an ongoing season long thing. Uh, I think the offensive lines. Kyle, when's the last time we had? Would you say a better offensive line? How far back would you even say where you'd find a tie? Yeah, so you I say four. See, so you say fourteen, but six games into that season, that offensive line was not good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they finished after they got there. By the end of the year, they got yeah, there. They got there, but remember, everybody, everybody was talking about how bad the offensive line was, especially after the Virginia Tech loss. They were like. Oh great! This is gonna be a long season, and this and that. We don't, we don't, we don't have, we don't have. Um, Braxton it did Miller. turn out to be a long season. To be fair, 
Yeah, 2015. Okay, 2015. It was a it was a really good it was a really good offensive line. But man, it that 2015 season really feels like this is um, it's Georgia's season this year right now. It's great. It's a great offensive line, but just not clicking. It's just not clicking overall. And and it was just a couple of years ago too. Maybe, was it last year or two or three years ago? It was, it was recently when you and I, Jared, were on here saying this could be like the best offensive line Aussie has ever had. Um, maybe it was last year. Was it last year or two years ago? It was. It was when they decided to do pretty much like all tackles. Yeah, um, but but that didn't actually work out all that. It didn't really work out all that well, especially in like short yardage situations. Yes. Yes. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, Gangland asks, how how ecstatic are you to be in the big noon kickoff portion of the schedule now? Well, we, we have another week still. Yeah, we, we got we got a we got a bye week here. But no, I'm, I'm happy. Uh, I mean, night games are fun. Um, the the crowd is always energetic here, but. I don't know. It's something about noon games in Ohio State. It's it, it just feels right. <laughs> it just feels right. Is Penn yes, State a Penn noon State, game? Yes. Yes, it is. Yes, it is a noon game, and uh, that's that's going to heavily favor Ohio State. You still see to be determined. Uh, check a different website. I'm almost certain that they announced that a a, a while back that that yeah. was a noon game because it's because. It was the whole thing of Penn State deciding not to do the whiteout for Ohio State this year um, because they didn't want to do the whiteout at noon. Yeah. Yeah. There there are some sites that still says TBD, but it's it's going to be noon. All right. Buckeye Esquire, what are your thoughts on what seems like an extreme focus on sportsmanship at the expense of developing the backups? Yeah, like score. I I'm we're still playing a football game. Like and like I, I understand like taking your foot off the gas a little bit. Well, sure. How state how state did. They they only scored 14 points in the second half in this game. <laughs> yeah, but there have been other I think you maybe you go back to Rutgers and the situation there, and we we saw a couple <laughs> uh situations you know in, in in recent weeks of coaches getting mad about running plays late and um but i but where where do you and i don't necessarily mean but you know you the listener where do you draw the line do you still run your full playbook is that okay should it, it, you it might... should you not play should you play most of your playbook, but none of like the deep stuff? Like, don't be throwing the ball too deep. Um, if you're typically a team that goes no huddle, do you start doing huddles or at least getting your way to the line very slowly instead of, you know, like Oregon under Chip Kelly fast? You know what I mean? Um, I think that these are, you know, where because like run up the score versus not run up the score. Right. But. I think most of us fall somewhere in a gray area in between. Mm -hmm. So, so in, in, in my opinion, I, in my opinion, I think when you have this kind of game, you're up 42 to 40. Yeah. It was like 42. No, it was 49 to 14 at the end of the third quarter. 13. That entire, that, that entire fourth quarter or whatever the it, score, 40, 49 to 13. It's fine. Keep yeah, going. Just, <laughs> yeah, just just take them out from there. I think three quarters. I think playing your first team three quarters in a conference matchup is fine. It's fine. And then the fourth quarter, if you are up by twenty eight plus points, take them out. Take them out. Because honestly, like even twenty one yeah, but... points. If you're up by twenty one points, that that can sway so quickly because we've seen that happen a couple of times under Urban Meyer. Ohio State was up twenty one points. All right, you, you took the quarterback out, and all of a sudden, they the next team they they scored seven points. Oh, 
then they scored 14. Now you're only up by seven. Oh, got to get the starters back in and hopefully, uh, hopefully they can get that groove back in again. And I remember that happening more than once personally, but my memory is dog shit. So <laughs> I had a nightmare last night that Michigan state came back after Stroud went out. Well, that's just, that just means you're an Ohio state fan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you know, how and again, where does the equation change? Like, if you like, hey, we're running our full playbook, but we're not playing our starters. I personally think that's totally acceptable. Like, maybe you shouldn't be running a hurry up. Like, maybe that's a good idea. Maybe that maybe running a hurry up, even with your backups, is maybe in poor taste. But mm-hmm. again, like, there's a bunch of different. Not not everyone's is going to be the same as far as where they fall in the gradient. I thought yeah. it would happen after Kyle posted his victory liquor. Yeah, you did. You did actually. You were giving crap, <laughs> Kyle, for pouring picture pi- victory liquor um, before we actually had uh, quad zeros. Kyle's a brave man, though. He's he's watched his fair share of football. I have. All right, uh, Gangland here asked. Are practice reps against the first team defense more valuable than going up against Sparty? It's a good question. <laughs> uh, against Sparty? Yes. <laughs> yes. All right. Buckeye Esquire has a few questions here and we'll, we'll end this episode here. Uh, who is a, and I, I like this question, uh, Buckeye Esquire, uh, who is a player that has not made a large statistical impact thus far that you think will break out or have a meaningful impact in the back half of the year. Statistically, I I got to give it to JT. Yeah. I got to give it to JT uh, Tui Malau. And Just Sawyer been... and mm-hmm. like all, all the defensive ends, uh, you know, throw, you know, all the defensive ends into that. None of them are showing up statistically, but are all playing exceptionally well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I, but if I'm going to go with one person, I'll go with uh, JT Tuimalau. I, I, I think he's going to have just a breakout, and I, and I feel and even some of you mentioned it in the chat here in this episode. He's just a step. He's a half step away from getting that tackle, getting that sack, and I feel like he's going to get there soon. It's going to happen. Yeah, and you know, just to, I'm a, I'm gonna try and go because we've talked about how the defensive ends are playing well and all that. Right. But I'm going to, I'm going to go uh, maybe more at the spirit of the question and say Denzel Burke. He's not had a good start to the That's year, mm-hmm. um, but I totally still believe in him and him figuring out what has gone wrong. Uh, he, I thought had a good game against Sparty, um, but I still have the utmost faith in him. And that, you know, they're going to figure it out and he's going to have uh, an excellent back half of the season. Fair enough. Once teams need to start running more complicated passing concepts. Um, you have to have a good quarterback to do that, though. Yeah. We are not playing a, t- a ton of zone to hide the looks. Um. Yeah, that's probably fair. Um, but I, I think to me, it's with the corners. I feel like they're there. They're in position. They're there to make a play, but then just not making a play. So I don't, mm. I really don't even know how much of it is scheme or how much of it is. um a, a mix up in their man versus zone duties. It's just about finishing the play most times. Yep. 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 All right. Uh, let's see here. Uh, the question from Esquire. What is an area you think we will improve on in the second half of the year? I, I, I think you kind of, I think you kind of just said it there finishing the play. For, uh, for some of these players. Yeah, uh, just sure, shoring up the the man-to-man coverage, which, by mm-hmm. the way, is a very specific ask 
and you just have to acknowledge for a second how good the team is because like we have a a very specific thing that we want to see improved on for the second half of the year yeah and And i'll tell you what now here here's one injuries i feel like the team has been very injury prone this year and i I don't know if like i'm I'm glad you brought that up, Jared, because that, that was something I actually wrote in my notes I forgot to really mention about. Yeah, the injuries have been piling up, but honestly, like, and, and we noticed this after the Notre Dame game, just how deep Ohio State really is in pretty much almost every position here. And we haven't, and Ohio State hasn't missed a step. Jason goes down, Marvin Harrison Jr. stepped up, and now he, now he has like a bajillion touchdowns already this year. The, um, the running, running back, we, we lost a running back for the year, our second or third um, string running back. And then Henderson's out, and then, and then Williams is out, um, a game here. And they go on without a beat too. It's, it's just crazy how deep this team is and how fortunate Ohio State is developing these players to the point where it's just next man up here. Yeah. Um, yeah. Spike says it's been a socially acceptable method of getting time for our reserves. I think there's something to that. I, I think there is something to, uh, I mean, it's not even think Ryan day said it last week. Um, uh, he said Hancock could probably go, but they're just going to let him rest till after the bye week. Yep. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're, I, we're, and we're, by the we're way, gonna see, I, we're, we're going to see how healthy this team is after their, after their bye week here. I mean, I, I expect to see a lot of these, a lot of these players back in here. Now there, there's a couple that's kind of rumored about not playing for a little bit longer, but I mean, we'll, we'll see when it, when that time comes, but. But yeah, we're 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 halfway already through the regular season for the Buckeyes here, and got to get got to get healthy and ready for that second half here. Yeah, uh, right. Gangland also said, um, I don't think they are severe injuries. Most of them have not been, um, so it isn't anything to panic about. Yeah, and by the way, if you're still if there's people out there who are still worried about, um, like, you know. JSN packing it up for the season. Stop. This is this is like a very persistent rumor that is floating around the internet right now. It's okay. That's 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 not that's not what's happening. Everything's fine. Um, unless JSN re-injures himself somehow, he's gonna be fine. He's going to be back. He's going to be playing this whole he's planning on shutting it down for the season thing. It's not real. So it's okay. Yep. Yep. All right. And the last question here, Jared, and we'll wrap it up here. Uh, Duncan says, Jared, you said you were glad we got Notre Dame early and were concerned about them for the game next year more than this year. Has your preseason opinion changed? Um, early concerned they were um, them for the game next year than this year as your preseason opinion changed um i'm it'll it'll be (sighs) notre dame would be in a much better spot right now if they still had their first string quarterback um and they'd also be in a better spot next year because of you know game experience um and i do think notre dame is finally starting to get their feet underneath them um by the way Rutgers lost and Ohio State's streak of beating every team twice is still alive is there actually maybe something to this every single team that has lost to Ohio State has turned around and lost again the next week Ohio State's not just beating teams right now they're breaking them um and I feel like again I feel like Notre Dame's starting to get their feet underneath them and they'd be better off if they had their starting quarterback, I think. I got, I got to look here. Oh, gangland. You were correct. 
Utah did yeah. lose their season yeah, that, opener. That's, that's exactly what I was looking at. So that's that's seven in a row here. Um, so what was what was last year? So Ohio State <laughs> and they beat so they beat um, Michigan State before they lost to Michigan. So what was Sparty? I'm I'm curious now. Uh, Michigan. Yeah, I, I was about to say that too. Spikes. Technically, Michigan lost the next game too. I mean, we didn't. We didn't beat them the first time, but we got them the second oh, time. All right. So, so it ends right there. So it start it starts with Utah because the next week after Michigan State got uh, destroyed by Ohio State, uh, they ended up beating Penn State that next week. So it started with Utah. So seven games straight here, Jared. But no, Michigan. What? We lost to Michigan. But Michigan did did then turn around and and lose in the first in the playoffs. That does that doesn't count. Ohio State didn't beat them. Okay, that then then that's, that's where it ends. Then that's, that's what, where what, it ends. Gosh, Jared. All right, that's <laughs> that's it here. Um, I know Duncan. Oh yeah, the championship Jared, game. That, that question. I forgot about that, that the question. Big Ten championship game. Shit. Um, the the I know that question was directed to to Jared Duncan, but to me, I I don't think it changed my opinion either because I I kind of agree with Jared. I'm more worried for next year's than I was this this year for Ohio State Notre Dame game. And we're starting to see Notre Dame's starting to get things turned around here. They they got the they got their uh big win of the season over BYU just this last weekend here. We'll, we'll see how the season continues on, but maybe this is the turning point for their season because that I think there was a time in the um after that Ohio State Notre Dame game that hey it's probably fortunate that we played them early on because they may be a much a much different team come November. Yeah, but I don't uh, again without their quarterback, I just don't think that like we had also talked about, you know, could Notre Dame lose to Ohio State, that's, then turn around, true, game. win that's all their game. games, maybe get back into the playoffs and you know, obviously that that ended the next week, but yeah. Still yeah. All right, Jared. Uh, this was a long episode, so I'm I'm just gonna keep it nice and short here, Jared. So let's uh, let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and end the episode. Uh, no cow's corner for today. So yeah, that's that's it for our scarlet and grade on um, on Michigan State. Uh, no, I don't want to talk about the crew losing and missing the uh, the playoffs. Spikes. The spikes. Spikes. Be very careful what you say next, good sir. Mm-hmm. Be very careful what you say next. <laughs> um, so, some someone's in Orlando. So, someone's an Orlando guy. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, tonight's, I guess, Kyle. Uh, fast forward. It's all the way to the end. Um, so I guess I'm gonna let you know that uh, tonight's ending music will be brought to you by a band called Portage. And uh, with all that being said, I'd like to. Uh, what what do I do? <laughs> I'd like to tell everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Portage. <laughs>